Okay, so this is going to be a relatively brief uh, video on brainstorming. Now, you know, why should you watch my video? So I have an MFA in creative writing, an MA in English. When I was a high school English teacher, I did a lot of um, uh, writing development for like persuasive writing, expository writing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, plus, you know, obviously, I mean, as a college application essay consultant, I've worked with over a thousand students um, who have gotten into either the Ivy League top tier or reach schools. So, so I hope I have the the street cred um, to to explain this to you, uh, and I'll do it as as briefly as I can. So, I want you to think about one thing first. You know, you worked hard on your academics to to have whatever you have to apply to the colleges you're applying didn't happen overnight, right? I mean, it started in ninth grade or whatever, and you you worked. So it's really bad. And it's really dangerous to approach the essays the way you approach an essay for an English class or social studies class, which is I'm going to sit down and write the essay in an hour and be done with it. You can't, these essays are way, way, way too important. You can't do that with these. Okay, so here's what you want to do. Now, let's start with the the obvious, the common app essays. There are seven prompts. Now, you're not going to have ideas for all seven, and you shouldn't. Nobody does. So here's what you want to do. So the first time you sit down, you're going to look at each prompt, prompt number one, you know, whatever it is this year, I mean, it's the same, it's been for a while, but the, um, you know, central to your identity, your background, and you're going to just think in terms of bullet points, words, just words like, okay, central to my identity, I play the guitar. Um, oh, I'm on the fencing team. I do robotics. But, but more than that too, what's a big part of me? Oh, I love to game night with my family, whatever it is, what, whatever is central to your identity. If, and by the way, if you can come up with anything, you might not have anything. You might sit there and go, I really don't, I can't think of anything. And that's okay. You're not supposed to have them for all, but just an ex as an example. So for the first one, and you just want bullet points, like a word or two or a phrase, the second one, you know, it's the, time, obstacle, failure, setback, we've all had them. So it could be an academic class, it could be a sporting event, it could be anything where there was a setback. And again, briefly, just a word or two, a phrase, that's it. See how many out of the seven you can get. Now, you're not going to have all seven. You're going to be lucky if you have three, you know, three different prompts where you have a couple of different words for them. Most of you are going to have just one, one good one where you have a whole bunch or, or maybe two, and you're not going to have it for the rest, and that's fine. Now, here's the key. Walk away. After you make that list, literally walk away. Go binge watch, you know, Game of Thrones. Go, go play basketball. Go, just go away. Just go away. Come back to it next day, the day after. Now, when you look at those lists, let's say you had two different prompts that you liked and you had different bullet points. Go through each bullet point until you find the one that you go, yeah, you know, I, I think I could write a lot on this one. What you don't want to do, especially for you overachievers, do not decide I'll write two or three different essays and see which one I like. Worst mistake you could make. Worst mistake. Because what's going to happen is it's like comparing apples and oranges plus you're going to show, you know, essay number one to three people and essay number two. And, you know, three people are going to like essay number one, three people are going to like essay number two, and you're going to be really, really, really confused. So don't do that. Find the one thing that you like. Okay. Now, once you have that one thing, the first time you're going to write anything is really what I call stream of consciousness. It's almost like talking. Just, just get the ideas on paper. Don't worry about sentence structure. Don't worry about run-on sentences. Don't worry about word choice. Just tell the story. It could almost be like you're talking. Just tell the story. Just tell the story. That's it. After you're done with that, once again, walk away, go away, go have some fun, watch TV, take a nap, whatever you got to do. That Now, the next day you come back or again, two days later, whatever, don't make it like a month later. I'm not, you know, come on. Uh, but, you know, a day later, now is when you start to slowly structure this. Okay, 
do the ideas flow? Do you want to change the flow? Does it make more sense if the third paragraph is at the beginning? Do you, you know, the, the ideas, the flow of ideas, you want to start to make sure your ideas make sense to start at A, move to B, move to C, you know, that kind of thing. And then walk away again, if you'd like, it's okay. You know, look, if you want to sit at this point, if you want to sit and put more time into it, it's okay, but it's really normal and it's really healthy to just walk away and always kind of look at it with new, fresh eyes. You know, when you sit and write anything for a couple hours, after a while, it just all becomes a blur. But if you are able to, let's say in that, in that you know, time sitting there, you structure it, what, what makes sense in the chronology of the story? Um, then, you know, you can walk away. Now you want to come out, now you want to start to up the language. You want to, now look, you don't want to sound like you swallowed a thesaurus either, you know, but if you wrote the words, you know, if you wrote the kids in my class, you could change that to my classmates or my peers or other teens, you know what I mean? So simple. Um, I say this on a lot of the videos, but, but it's really, really, really important that if you haven't seen it, you should really watch the my top 10 mistakes students make on college application essays to get a, a framework and a foundation that will help you with this process. And then I, I have the other essay, which is on the college, uh, the, the common app essay prompts. So then this is really the third uh, um, video that you should be watching. I know that's really way too much of me, but I'm sorry. Um, so now is when you start structuring it. Okay. How is the flow? How is the chronology? What's the language? Then also, what's extraneous? What don't you need? What did you add that's really not moving the story forward that you really don't have to tell them, Larry? Take that out. And that's when you start to revise and revise and just clean it up and you're done. So that's basically it. That's basically the framework for brainstorming. All right, good luck.